In this video, we're going to talk about Tesla, trading under the ticker symbol TSLA. We're going to cover the price action over the past few days, the company itself, and the recommendations regarding buying, holding, or selling the shares. If you would like to see more stock analysis videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. But before today's video begins, I'd just like to clarify a few things about the timing when my videos are recorded, uploaded, and how much they react to the latest market updates. Those are prepared, recorded on the day before and scheduled for the next day. If there are significant and volatile movements during the trading day, they will not be reflected in the video itself. With that being said, to the extent possible, my analysis will be based on the medium term or even the long term and not necessarily on the intraday movements. The main reason why it shouldn't matter that much is because most people investing in stocks or even just trading in and out of their positions usually keep their positions open for at least a few weeks. With that being said, if there are significant movements in the stock price that happens afterwards, either they will not affect the overall picture, so in that case we will cover them the next time we're supposed to cover them, or if they are significant enough that they change the outlooks, then yes, I will do a follow-up video in the shortest delay possible with a re-evaluation of what I think should happen next. Tesla is an EV company that manufactures fully electric vehicles and also provides services related to energy storage and other renewable energy resources. It is a relatively diversified company with products servicing different sectors and different segments of customers within each one of them, with different needs and budgets. Tesla is often viewed as the flagship company of an entire sector, because its stock fluctuations may influence the rest of the market and even the tech stocks in general. Many portfolios that are future-oriented tend to be relatively heavy on Tesla, because it is the undisputed leader in terms of sales, technical expertise, and established influence in the sector. Another appeal of Tesla is its CEO, Elon Musk, who is one of the most recognized figures in the industry and has a global following. The market cap of Tesla is currently at $1.04 trillion, and the enterprise value is at $886 billion. The market cap is the price tag a financial market is willing to pay for the company, with consideration to its future potentials, as well as the current fundamentals. The enterprise value of the company is the net result of its assets once all the debts are paid back. Usually the market cap is higher than the enterprise value and it's no exception with Tesla. Sometimes there may be some exceptions because the company may be highly leveraged or under a lot of pressure from the market, such as from the short sellers. It's not the case with Tesla. Its quick ratio is 1.1, and the current ratio is 1.4, with a debt over equity of 0.36. The average trading volume of Tesla has been 36.4 million shares, and the daily volumes have been 25.2 million shares. 22.4 million shares, and 42.8 million shares a day. The one-year beta of Tesla is 2.62. Its 52-week high has been $1,243.49, and its 52-week low has been $404.08. Let's talk about the options market for Tesla. Right now, there seems to be a lot of open interest and volume for both sides, but it seems that nevertheless, the options market seemed to favor the call side. Generally speaking, the put options mean that the market expects a pullback, and the calls mean that the market expects the price to move up. The key strike prices, where there seems to be the most interest, are $1,100, $1,150, and $1,200. Basically, there is little dispute about the fact that Tesla is a good company with great potentials ahead of it. The question is whether its recent price action suggests that it's a little bit overbought. But, of course, 
At the same time, even if it is, my honest answer is it doesn't mean that now isn't a good time to enter the stock either, as long as you keep the exposure to a decent level. What we know for sure is that as Tesla develops new technologies in future, there will be new catalysts pushing the stock upward. This is why I believe that we need to make sure that we have a position in the company as long as there is enough additional allocation so that there is enough capital to average down in case its stock price goes down due to pullbacks after the recent surges. So my recommendation is to maintain your Tesla position and to maybe increase it up to 10% of your portfolio if that's not already the case and to hold it at that level for at least the next three to five years. In this current market environment, I believe that we should be careful about taking positions and risk in the financial market in general and in the equity market in particular. Because over the past decade or so, the financial market has been living with the help of newly created capital from QEs, resulting in a massive increase of asset prices and the corresponding decrease in their yields. And the low interest rate also contributed to reinforce this phenomenon because the financial sector would see its profit margins reduced and in turn keeps the returns of other sectors and employees low as well. At the same time, the market doesn't represent the real economy and the real economy doesn't get reflected in the price of different securities. The market is a game of supply and demand, which will depend on a number of factors, not just the fundamentals. If the asset prices only depend on the fundamentals, then their performances in the Northern Hemisphere would have been more than mediocre because things have been mostly stagnant over the years. A few things can explain why asset prices managed to remain high despite the stagnation of the underlying businesses. The first one is that over the years, there has been more money printed by different central banks to support their own economies. But because that money is distributed to banks and expected to loan to businesses to create more jobs, and that in fact, there aren't that many opportunities out there, this money became capital that travels around the world and went into the huge financial melting pot. The QEs are now wrapping up in many countries, so I don't think that it'll remain as the main driving force over the next couple of years to keep the asset prices up. But it's compensated by the arrival of new capital from different regions to North America because it's perceived as a safe haven for investors. With the rising tensions around the world, this capital inflow will probably be sustained over the next couple of years, if not intensifying. The last phenomenon is the creation of artificial bubbles that are either supported by real market trends or completely fictional ones to allow market participants to play the game of hot potato and to either create profits or to save keep their capital. The EV sector back in 2020 is an excellent example of this. But nevertheless, what it means for the market is that the degree of uncertainty is probably going to increase over the foreseeable future, as the expectation for a recession has been building up for more than a decade, and that the economic difficulties are accumulating around the world, especially from Asia. What this means for the market and for us is that the volatility is supposed to increase over time, which will provide opportunities to make a profit or to incur losses, depending on the timing and risk management. Another thing to note for this period of time is that we have to be very careful about having shorts. It's already riskier than having longs because the losses of shorts are not limited, right? Because there's no limit in terms of how far the stock can increase. But with the increased involvement of short sellers, I believe that the stocks been shorted will have an even higher probability of getting squeezed, which will result in potentially massive losses. 
So we're also like observing more of an irrational behavior from market participants in the sense that very often people will choose to rush in a position, not necessarily because the fundamentals are convincing, but because there's a buildup of demand in a specific stock and people will pile in to ride the gravy train with the rest of us. That kind of behavior is highly risky and may result in losses. It's worth pointing out that in 2020 and probably in 2021, the market has never presented that many opportunities. But it was also during that same period of time that many retail traders have incurred their biggest losses. A rule of thumb is that each position should be structured so that even if they don't succeed, they don't impact the portfolio stability. Positions should begin small so that there is an opportunity to average down later. And specifically for the growth stocks, I think that 5 to 10% overall should be a healthy weight for the portfolio. And each stock should represent about 1 to like 3% of the positions. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.